What's up guys, Brennan Edwards here from Droner Tech, brought to you by RemotePilot101.com. And today, we're gonna hit the Droner news. So, let's get into it. So up first is the most, the big pink elephant in the room. It is the DJI and Autel patent war. And you'd think since both these companies are actually Chinese manufacturer drones, that they would have this patent war in China, but that's not the case. Actually what's going on is that Autel is suing for the patent of the way that the drone uh, propellers connect to the legs. It's pretty much how the propeller is connecting to the rotor of the engine on the drone. Pretty simple and straightforward, but a really good system. And it actually, they won. They beat DJI in court. And now things get a little bit more interesting. It applies to the Mavic Pro and the Platinum. It applies to the Mavic Pro, uh, 2 Pro, the Mavic Air, and the Spark. Now what's going on right now is that the court says that they did win and pretty much the judge went as far as to recommend that DJI stop importing the drones and recommend that the same drones would actually be pulled off the uh, store shelves. Now should we panic and be like, oh man, we can't buy our Mavic 2 Air or whatever now? It's like, no, that's not the case because DJI actually has a lot of recourse for this in the sense of they can pay a fee to Autel for the patent rights, leave, leave all the drones on the store shelves and still be able to import them, which we know they got the money to do it. They could obviously appeal because that's what happens in American courts, especially these kind of courts. The big news here is that Autel, which which is a much smaller company than DJI, was able to fight and win a battle in the courts against this giant company that you know has well-funded lawyers. And now the fallout begins. This is really interesting because it sets a precedent for patents in drone manufacturing, drone design, that's gonna be used moving forward. And that actually leads us to the next point of this story is that Flirty, which is the funniest drone company name ever, they created a tethered system that allows them to be able to lower items from the drones that are being like drone delivery service that allows them to use a tether to lower it to the ground so the drone doesn't have to land or actually drop something like a parachute on it. And it's really interesting that they actually actually were awarded a patent for that tethering system that's lowering things, even though companies like Google are already using tether systems that look just like it before they even got this patent. So we're gonna keep an eye on it and let you guys know what we find out. So up next, what we have are two senators in Nevada that are actually pleading with the Department of Transportation Secretary Chow to loosen the beyond line of vision regulations. Obviously, if you know the Part 107 laws, that is a big deal. You are not allowed to fly past where you can see. And you know, the human eye only can see normally up to about a mile and a half, two miles at the most. A lot of times, uh, if there's clouds up there, you have a little white drone, it can get much shorter. And the problem is, is that in Nevada, and specifically a lot of other states that are looking to do drone deliveries, those waivers are life to be able to run a business and be able to let the technology do what it does. And without us being able to get those, or without them, I should say, being able to get those waivers, they're not able to push forward and be able to help people in the way they need to. And that's why these two senators, Senator Catherine Cortez Masto from a Democrat from Nevada and Jackie Rosen is a Democrat from Nevada as well, are coming together to talk to that secretary to say, hey, look, we really, really need this because this is critical for our ability to be able to fight COVID, to be able to deliver medical supplies as quickly as we need to. And it's just something that is actually able to help people. And there's no reason why we can't allow this, figure out a way for this to work. And right now it's working way too slow. Please, please, please allow this to happen faster. This is why, let's do it. This story actually started back in 2017 when Secretary Chow was brought in to be the head of the Department of Transportation. And in all honesty, what she said in her inaugural speech was saying that drones are a big deal, they should be supported, and figure out how to better incorporate them because the technology is really important. So those words were taken out of the secretary's mouth and brought into the senators, and the senators are coming back and saying, you said that drones were really important, so you need to loosen these restrictions so that we can actually develop the technology to do things like medical deliveries. But either way, this is something that I definitely recommend keeping your eye on because if they start to grant beyond visual line of sight to different municipalities and different people on all different things or changing the entire way the commercial drone uh, registration or drone laws work, then that affects all of us. We'll see how this develops and we'll keep an eye on it for you guys. All right, so up next we have, because of COVID times, drones disinfecting. Yeah, that's a thing now. And there's two different ways that our people are going about it. One of them, if you go into Buffalo, New York, you'll see there's a company called Eagle Hawk that is using a dual drone tethered system to be able to clean things like the Key Bank Center. So the way they do this is that there's a tank of disinfectant that is tethered to a drone that is flying and spraying the disinfectant over the area, over, over the stadium. And then there's a secondary drone that is actually keeping that tether out of the way of the initial drone so that you don't have any issues with that tethering, obviously getting into the props and making it crash or do anything like that. A really interesting application that they're looking to be able to do for a lot bigger stadiums, a lot bigger, bigger spaces, and something to keep your eye on because that could be a way that we're gonna see stadiums be disinfected, not cleaned, that's a difference. Disinfecting entire stadium areas 
with drones seems to me like a very efficient way to do it because you're not having to hang up wires for things that have to spray in all different areas and things like that and then take them all down. A drone is something that can fly, you're gonna have an empty stadium, spray it all down, and then it just is done. And I think it will be done pretty efficiently because you can do autonomous flight modes as well if you map it out the right way. So I think that's actually a really good idea and we'll see how that works out as they are just now really starting to get to do it. And also there's a light drone, ha ha ha, that's a play on words, because they're actually using UV light to be able to disinfect areas. And it's pretty much taking a Parrot Bebop 2 is what it looks like they're using. And they're putting the light source on it that kills bacteria. And this UVC um, light is very, very dangerous to humans if you're exposed to it for too long. So that's what makes it really good for drones. Because you can put it on something that isn't around humans, put it into a space or a room to be able to disinfect it. Now they're still in the testing process and don't know exactly how effective this is or how long the light has to be exposed to a surface before it, be it kills 99% or more of all the bacteria and viruses that are there. But it's something that they're looking at that is worth testing simply because this light does work and they know it works to do this, but they also know we can't have it around people, thus bring it in for drones. And all of this is happening at UC San Diego. So pretty close to home since I'm in LA. Gotta keep an eye on that too. All right, up next, shooting down drones is a felony charge. So at first when I read this, I actually was really excited. I'm like, yeah, don't shoot my drone down. But I was like, but a felony? So I feel like you should have to pay for my drone and maybe get like a little slap on the wrist or something like that. Like you shouldn't do that or get a fine or something, but a felony? Well, it turns out that shooting down an aircraft, AKA what a drone is registered as or considered to be when it comes to all the FAA laws and federal laws, is the same as shooting down a passenger airliner, which can get you up to 20 years. In Minnesota, which obviously they're, they're going through it right now, but in Minnesota, there's a man who was arrested with two felony counts when he shot down somebody who was flying a drone over his workplace. And what really happened here was a drone guy was flying over a chicken processing plant for a news story without permission, obviously. Two men came out, one went to go talk to him, the other one I, I had no time for the words. He pulled out the gun, he shot it down, and now it lands in court as my man is arrested. All right, so what my man was actually charged with was damage, uh, criminal damage to property for, and also discharging a firearm within city limits. So either way, he's not having a good day right now, I'm sure, because he definitely got charged with some serious things, but I actually don't think he should have to go to jail for 20 years or anything like that with a felony charge for what you would get for shooting down a passenger airline. But it's really interesting that I think this might be a case that sets a precedent of how we're gonna have to make drone laws different for drones versus other aircraft because it's not the same, man. It's not the same. And the last but not least story, one that I'm not super excited to talk about is uh, back to my home state of Michigan in Detroit, Michigan, uh, the Blue Angels. I'm sure you may or may not have heard, this has been all over the drone forums, all over Facebook, Instagram and all that. They were flying in Detroit and some genius decided that what he wants to do is fly his drone to see the jets. And he got super close to them. And it got a crazy shot of jets flying right by the drone and got so excited about it. What do you do when you got really, really cool footage, guys? You post it online. <laughs> and that's what he did. And now, because of that, the, F the FAA is investigating my man and he's had a serious, some serious legal issues coming his way because you, you posted it. You posted that you shot the Blue Angels from a drone, which is so illegal that you were that, they were so close. I actually saw the footage. If you look here, you'll see that way, 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 way too close. <sighs> no matter how good that footage is, it's not worth it. The risk isn't worth it. And honestly, you're like, the reason these kind of uh, stories upset me is because you're making the rest of us as a drone community look bad. You're making it so there needs to be more laws to prevent idiots like you from doing things like this again. And that makes it so that we have to jump through more hoops to do things legally and safely because you don't know how to pay attention to what you're doing and you don't care about the laws and you don't care about the community. Because honestly, at this point, I don't consider you part of it. But either way, they do. And so here we are. Thanks, bro. And I'm actually gonna be doing a more in-depth look on this. If you guys head over to Droner Tech, my YouTube channel, I'm doing a more in-depth look at exactly what happened here, how it happened and how it spread across the internet and how my man got noticed for who he was. He got exposed, so check it out. Droners, thank you so much for checking out this week's edition of Droner News. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, we actually, this is our second week, so if you wanna see more drone articles like this, you can go back and check them out on the Remote Pilot 101 page because it's amazing. And make sure you guys subscribe, like, and share this so that we can know that you love it and we can keep doing it. This, again, was brought to you by Remote Pilot 101, and I need you guys to make sure you stay fly.